Good evening, passengers, and welcome to tonight's episode of Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. With me here tonight is Sherlock. Evening. And the fangirl. Oh boy, I'm glad I stopped by the dining cart first. <laughs> uh, so, how has your week been, you two? Uh, moving on. Yeah, that... I would, I would prefer that in spite of the time of year and what normally happens around this time, I've had a pretty good week so far. Yeah, same. I can't really complain. Uh, nothing really interesting has happened on uh, my side apart from uh, finding a few interesting books. Like, for starters, uh, apparently Star Wars Visions is expanding beyond its uh, animated short uh, compilation. And they're branching out into books to give more context into some of their characters for some of their shorts. The first of which that I'm aware of is the uh, the book simply known as Ronin, which is uh, based on the first short in season one. That was, um, what was, called? was that called the Ronin? I think so. It was uh, the Ronin. The book, at least, is. It's the black and white one with the uh, surpri- surprise twist that no one. Yeah, done by the same guys who did JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. It looked like it was mo-capped. I don't know about mo-capped. It looked more like it was done by the uh, by Trigger, which I know it wasn't, though. No, I'm pretty sure it was done by the guys who did JoJo JoJo's. Yeah, maybe. It's called the Duel. Yeah. Oh yeah, the duel. That was the duel is the first one. That would make more sense. Yeah, I haven't read that book yet because I'm currently reading uh, Brutal Cunning, which yes, it's a Warhammer book, and yes, it has orcs. Because like, be careful. You said the you said the forty k you said the forty k thing. We're gonna get a C and D. Right, fucking Games Workshop going fucking mental about everything. I hate that shit. Games Workshop can go fuck right off. The BBC is telling them to chill. Yeah, because like they're going they're that, out. They're that assholeish about it right now. They're going out and putting. Uh, uh, what was it? What, what did you just say? It was called Sherlock. C and, C and D, cease and desist. Yeah, because of fucking fan fiction. Fan fiction, you know, shit that doesn't matter in the context of the canon. Like just fucking chill and let people tell their own stories, create their own chapters of fucking uh, Imperial Space Marines or whatever. The BBC doesn't even do that to Doctor Who fans. They don't go trolling through fanfiction.net and saying, hey, hey, you better stop that. That's our intellectual property. And yet they decided they wanted to trademark the word ineffable just to be dicks to the good old <laughs> fandom, but guess what? Uh... <laughs> I think, Mr. Gaiman... Pratchett, I think Mr. Pratchett and Mr. Gaiman would have words. Well, Mr. Pratchett would if he were still alive. Gaiman yeah. did have words. His words were, well then, they're ju- well then, it's perfectly effable. <laughs> 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 they can't yeah. trademark that one. No. But yeah, Brutal Cunning, good book so far. It's orcs who are these big, dumb, fucking people. Well, monsters, really, with guns that are held together by spit, metal, and literal imagination going up against the Adeptus Mechanicus who are these uh, cybernetically enhanced people. You know, they're kind of Cybermen, kind of Borg. They see the flesh as imperfect and whatnot, you know, that sort of shit. So it's two extremes. One is big dumb green orc boy. The other is smart mechanical boy. So I always always thought the orcs were fungus. They are, they are. Which is another reason why they're so interesting. Uh, anyway, moving on from that. Uh, nothing real interesting otherwise on my end. So I think, unless either of you have any uh, points you want to bring up, I think we can get this show started. Fortunately, I have no good jokes. A uh, shame. Right, so we can get this show started. Folks, you know the drill by now. We're Trademarks Trainwreck. We're on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. We have the softcore material and the hardcore material. There's crime of varying degrees. And we also have musical interludes, one of which is coming up right about now-ish. So we'll be right back with Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio all fandom all the time, except when we are ineffable.
Welcome back, passengers, to Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. Time to start the softcore material. Where better to start? In Florida. Of course. It's always Florida. Always fucking Florida. And this one, it's a classic. It's a classic sort of crime. We got... A car with red and blue lights stopped, and a Florida driver wearing a fake badge. Oh, when you said classic, I was going to go with, like, what, somebody's either going to be naked, stealing a cop car, or there has to be an alligator involved. Or, or, a slow, a slow vehicle chase involving either a tractor or a rascal. Nah, I meant classic in the general sense, just, well... Let's take a look at the context before I uh, talk about the general uh, term of classic. <clears throat> Orange County, Florida, on October 29th, 2021. A man is accused of impersonating a law enforcement officer after a Florida Highway Patrol trooper pulled him over for a for driving a car with red and blue lights. Hector Manuel Bonnet, 60 of St. Cloud was arrested Friday morning after the traffic stop on State Road 417 near Lee Vista Boulevard. According to the arrest for, uh, affidavit, a trooper was driving along, along SR 417 around 10 a.m. when his radar clocked a vehicle behind him driving 86 in a 70 mile per hour zone. The trooper reported seeing several vehicles move out of the way of a black Dodge Charger with red and blue lights uh, flashing. The trooper... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the trooper then slowed their vehicle and moved over to allow the car to pass. While doing so, he also checked to see if any units in the area were responding to an emergency, but found none. Because here's the thing. Cops kind of operate on a hive network. They know who's in what section. The trooper said he looked again and saw that the lights had been turned off. Hmm. He then initiated a traffic stop on the Charger. The driver of the vehicle, Bonnet, was wearing a full uniform, tactical boots and vest, and a duty belt, which included a gun, pepper spray, expandable baton, and handcuffs. The trooper said Bonnet was also wearing a gold star badge similar to a sheriff's deputy. Bonnet denied having red and blue flashing, uh, red and blue lights flashing on his car, adding that he was heading to work at a jewelry store. You catch that? Okay. A guy in a car with red and blue flashing lights, dressed to the nines, is going to a jewelry store. At night. At night. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of weird. Well, actually, no, wait, it's not, it's not at night. This is 10 a.m. So, oh. So not sorry. at night. <clears throat> uh, Bonnet faces a charge of falsely per, uh, impersonating an, falsely personating an officer. Is that a word? Personate? Also, falsely impersonating. It should be impersonating an officer. Falsely impersonating an officer, as opposed to rightfully per impersonating an officer. Kind of weird wording and grammar there, but okay, we get the point. It comes from it comes from Florida. Yeah, fair, fair. But yeah, the old classic crime. <sighs> My question is, the red and blue lights. Okay, that's one thing that kind of broadcasts that this guy wanted to. If the lights were there to begin with, it that kind of says that this guy wanted to have those lights on to get through traffic quick. But the uniform, the belt, the gun, the baton, the spray, the pepper spray. Why? Was that just... A, well, I asked myself why, but then I remember that in previous incidents, I remember previous incidents where some guys actually... Okay, I remember this one video of a guy pulling over someone else and doing the whole uh, traffic stop routine. Like, he had everything. He had a uniform. 
He had the uh, he had the dash cam, a fucking dash cam. He had the whole ensemble, but he was really fucking jittery. And the person he pulled over wasn't hadn't done anything wrong, of course. She was just targeted. Oh, and also the guy who pulled her over, who was dressed like a cop, brought his wife along in the passenger seat. And th- and she called the real cops, who swarmed upon this whole entire fucking thing. So yeah, some people take the whole impersonating a cop thing really fucking far. For some unknown reason. I have no idea why. I don't know well, if it's some sort of power play or what. It, it is. It's a power trip. Some of these people always wanted to be cops, never got around to doing it, or flunked out of it, or um, just weren't... Just, you know, wrong place, wrong time, never could get it. So they, a lot of them end up with the delusion of wanting to be able to do it themselves and saying, well, I can just buy all this stuff. I might as well do it. Others want to do it because of a need for power, you know, to assert their authority over other people because they think that other people are less than them. You will usually find these people to be Republicans. Mm. Um and there's some that even go darker with it, some that want to use uh, that disguise and that motif as a way to perform really horrible acts on people. Yeah. Usually women. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if I remember right, the, ser- the serial killer cousin duo, the, uh, the Hillside Strangler, Stranglers, because it was one guy, but actually two guys did it, they would pretend to be... Um, undercover officers in an unmarked car and pull girls over with a spinning red light on their dash. Yeah, and wasn't there also like Ted Bundy? Because like he did that, he did that once or twice, but then he realized how much trouble he could have gotten into. Oh, he um he he nearly got one woman, and then that woman actually used her brain and kind of realized this is kind of suspicious, and she got away. I remember that story. Yeah, because again, he did that. Uh, he did that initially, but then he realized oh, I could get in trouble with this. So instead, um, that's why he swapped to pretending to be crippled instead. Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a tactic that a lot of you know predators <coughs> like to use on people of all sorts. Like, heck, there's been people who've been who pretended to be cops just to straight out rob others too. So yeah, this guy made a humongous fucking mistake. Yeah. Honestly, though, it sounds like this old man just wanted to live a dream. Yeah, 60 years old in a black, uh, what was it, Dodge Charger? Yep, Dodge Charger. With the lights and the uniform, he even has a fucking badge. And it's like, did did somebody want to be a policeman when they were 10 years old but never got that chance? Like, dude, you could dress up, dress up as a cop, as a fake cop for Halloween. Dress yeah. up as a, dress up as a, dress up as a police officer for fun times in the bedroom. Don't get a fucking red, a, a red and blue light and a fake badge and drive around this fucking street with it. Like, yeah, that also, the the red and blue light alone is enough to get you a serious fine. Yeah. Also, don't get a gun pepper spray and an expandable baton the handcuffs you leave for the bedroom but otherwise don't get any of that stuff hey i've got a gun uh, and an expandable baton well i mean you're, but you you're a security, a security guard. guard i had a i had a gun and an expandable baton beforehand i just keep the expandable baton in the in the seat of my in the floorboard of my car well the difference Again. is you're not going around saying i'm a policeman you're no, not, not going around saying hi i'm officer sherlock please pull over Oh, God forbid. <laughs> Me, a cop. That. Yeah. No. You would not do well. You would hate every, every minute. None of us I, would make I, 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 it's it's a It's rough enough just to be co-worker with, court secu- with courthouse security. Yeah. Well, I think... I think it's time we move on to the next article, and oh boy... The the fucking And we just chalk this we can chalk, chalk chalk this up to just don't be stupid. Yeah, don't be don't be stupid. Keep your Halloween costumes for Halloween. Don't be stupid is kind of the point of the show. Yeah, pretty much. Case in point. Our next article. Man accused of violating letter of the law. <laughs> now for clarification, hey. here's the tagline. 
Floridian struck victim with a G. The- <laughs> Which reminds me, this episode of The Trainwreck is brought to you by the letter G. For, For God, God Almighty, what's wrong with you? God, thank, well, thank God Sesame Street's run by the public, uh, the, by PBS, otherwise they might sue us. Oh, oh, no. oh, the, oh other companies have done that, show. Anyway. So. Like, fuck it. What? 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 <laughs> Let's take a crack. Oh, by the way, it's another Florida story. Hey. Florida, Florida man. <laughs> Florida man strikes again. He struck on October 20th, where a Florida man appearing for arraignment on a battery charge was arrested uh, the day prior after striking a vi- female victim with the letter G that he removed from a courthouse sign. He thinks Why that, specifically the letter G? He thinks that battery uh, charge is going to stick. I'm more interested in whether or not the courthouse is going to, like, or the the judi- the court, the county or municipality is gonna take him take him to court for uh, vandalism. Again, of cor- why of specifically the letter G? Let's take a look. Uh, the victim in a Tuesday Tuesday morning attack is the same woman. Jordan Thomas, twenty six, is accused of battering in the prior case. Thomas was scheduled to be arraigned on a misdemeanor charge stemming from an alleged battery uh, the month prior on Shantaria Roll. Uh, Role? I don't know. A 23-year-old Vero Beach resident. Thomas, an Amazon driver, was free on $500 bond in the pending criminal case. Investigators say Thomas was inside the Indian River County Courthouse that morning when he grabbed a signage letter from a blackboard in front of courtroom three and threw it at Roll, sticking her with the letter G. Video from a security camera validates the charge, a sheriff's deputy noted. The incident, cops say, occurred while court was in recess. Roll is described in the arrest report as the, quote, victim and witness in the original charge of battery. Thomas was arrested for battery and violating the terms of his pre-trial release in the prior case, which included a condition that he have no contact with Roll. He is currently being held without bond in the county jail. So I have no... No, he took, he took the, uh... He took the letter? Took the sign, the sign he took the, uh... It. Yeah, the, uh... The courthouse, uh, the courtroom schedule sign, and threw the whole thing at her. I guess. And just the letter G stuck he on just, her somewhere. Either that, or he just turned into a Batman villain and started flinging letters at her. I am Alphabet Man! Yeah! <laughs> Isn't there an actual Alphabet Man? That uh, is just retarded. Uh, I hate to use this word, but it's just retarded. Um, I'll make please sure stru- it a Like... Censor that word. That is just ludicrously stupid. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's violate he's violating his pretrial releases. And that's a really easy way to do it, especially if the judge says do not have contact with the named victim. I won't contact her, lot. but this letter will. <laughs> just what? Why? Like, uh, he- here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sounds like a very angry man. Sounds like an angry man. Let us, as much as we would like to not to not do this, let us for, forget the, uh, ah, just, it, <laughs> I'm trying to word this properly, but my brain keeps going back to the fact that they are clearly in an, an unhealthy relationship, and this guy obviously has some anger issues that he's going through all this rigmarole, whereas previously he probably would not have been put through this shit. This shit being actually being caught and actually going to trial for him doing something completely stupid and wrong. So, I don't know. There's really not much to say in this regard. It's just silly that he chose a letter as his weapon, but really, that's the best case scenario, I suppose. I think the I think the uh, the, the newspaper is hyping up this 
Because like, I'm sure the person writing it was like, hey, he used a sign full of letters and he was in a courtroom. Letter of the law. Ha <laughs> ha pun. Yeah. Guys, stop it. You're not the fucking Daily Show or Last Week Tonight. Okay? <laughs> I will say it has been a slow week for silly news. So I just, I thought this would uh, be a funny, uh, funny little thing. But if you really want something stupid, look no further than our final softcore article for tonight. This, okay. So ever since the human malware hit us, there's been a lot of interesting trends with certain products. Certain products have been more difficult to keep stock of, and other products have been limited, shall we say. One of these products is trading cards. Like, I believe if you were to go into Target right now at the time of this recording, which is November 3rd, if you were to go into Target, you would see a sign that says, Two Packs Per Customer. They actually have a limit on how many cards you can actually get. So, the market for cards has gotten a little bit ludicrous. Case in point. Georgia man allegedly used human malware business loan to buy $57,000 Pokemon card. Singular. Card. Just the one. Gotta catch what them all, card? I guess? I don't know. Let's take a gander. Again, I guess he gets just had to catch them all. I guess. Uh, Georgia man. Oh, by the way, this was on October 25th, 2021. <clears throat> a Georgia man has been charged for lying to the Small Business Association when he applied for a human malware relief loan. Prosecutors said that Vinath Odom sign O U D O M S I N E What a name Vinath Odom sign I'm probably saying that wrong uh, This person inflated the number of people he employed and the gross income of his company when he filled out the application of the uh, SBA's economic injury disaster loans these loans were meant to help business owners cover payroll, sick leave, and other costs such as rent to help them stay afloat during the pandemic. Last August, officials approved a loan for Odom Sign and deposited $85,000 into his bank account. But instead of using the money to cover his, ex his business expenses, Odom Sign spent over $57,000 to purchase a rare Pokemon card. Prosecutors did not say what card Odom Sign bought with the business loan. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I wish we could know. It's I'm curious now. Yeah, come on. It's probably that Mew card that looks like uh, the one from the original movie that Mew debuted in or whatever. And we gotta know. The public has to know. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, he was charged with one count of wire fraud and faces up to 20 years behind bars and a maximum fine of 2500 or $250,000. My apologies. I was about to say, really? Less than what he, like, spent on? <laughs> yeah, my apologies. $250,000. This is... That that fine is, of course, for if he's convicted. He's not entered a plea, and his his attorneys have not commented on the case, probably because they realized how fucking stupid this is. Earlier in the year, uh, yeah, that's that's work, that's padding. Uh, fraudulent loans accounted for one tenth, or one tenth of one percent of the two hundred twenty-four billion dollar program for the SBA. Jesus. Yeah, I'm sure there's conservative media that just loves stories like this to say, look what they're doing! Look what they're doing! Look what this one look guy at all, Look at all the waste... The, look at this welfare queen taking the money and running with it. Yeah. That's why you should vote Republican, so we won't give people free money, and they won't spend it illegally and frivolously. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Gotta find that. Come on. He'd be... 
I gotta I gotta know what the card is. I gotta know. I'm just gonna keep. I it. looked. It's not listed. Damn it. Come yeah, on. they don't want to say it. Come on, we got bastards. Know. So seriously, I'm so curious about this. Yeah, come on, we got we gotta know what this card is. Like, what fucking card costs fifty seven thousand dollars? Like, I remember back in the day when I was in the fucking Yu Gi Oh crowd, and to have that kind of price for a card is outstanding. Like, I get that there are some like rare cards that are out of print and also can never be used in an actual game like Exodia and all that shit. But for $57,000 for a single card? Well, let's see here. That card better have a fragment of Jesus Christ in it. And that well, fragment... Well, hang on, I've got, I've, got a top, I've got a top ten of, like, the most expensive Pokemon cards here. Let's see. Forty-five thousand dollars, forty-five thousand one hundred dollars for a um, Rayquaza. Oh, Rayquaza! Yeah, that yeah, Rayquaza, a Rick, a Rayquaza Hollow. Mm. Sixty thousand sixty-five dollars for a Charizard Hollow. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, sixty-five thousand one hundred dollars for a Tropical Wind. Tropical. Tropical wind. Metal Battle. Or tropical metal mega battle, excuse me. Weird. Okay, I have no idea what that entails. Yeah, sixty six thousand one hundred dollars for a university magic carp. University magic carp. What the what? fuck? Yeah, Tamamushi University Prize. I don't know what the fuck it's about. <laughs> Ninety thousand dollars for a number one trainer super secret battle card. The hell? These are all in Japanese. I'm just pointing that out. That, that except for this one. Okay. Uh, one hundred and forty four thousand three hundred dollars for a Lugia Hollow. Again, that doesn't surprise me. Okay, apparently See, this uh, this particular magic card, uh, it it was a university promo. It was a promotional card. Ah. So I guess it was for like a Japanese university. Show Gakukan yeah. Celadon University. Okay. $150,100. A Kanga Shakan? Kanga Shakan? See, Kang, it's Kanga S. Khan. Okay, I gotta take a look at this. Oh, Kangas Khan. Okay. Kangas Khan, excuse me. Kangas Khan Hollow card for $150,000. $360,000 for a blast for a blast toys from 90 from 1998. Uh, I want to say that doesn't surprise me, but that fucking price. Like, oh, it's a Galaxy Star Hollow. <laughs> yes, those were words. Yeah, I'm reading the description. Fair. Let's see. $370,000 for a Charizard Hollow. Good lord. 1999 First Edition. <laughs> $375,000 for a Pikachu Hollow. Probably a First Edition as well. Probably. And yeah, that's it. So, I mean, like, $57,000 ain't that unbelievable. And you guys never know. This guy could, like, just collect Pokemon cards. Like, that just could be his thing. Yeah, and as a as a collector in pointless shit myself i have no room to judge someone on collecting stuff but but for that much money and to use such a scummy tactic to get said money that is when you should realize that maybe you've taken your collecting a little bit too far all for the sake of not even a laminated piece of paper just a piece of paper a piece of paper that is just a little bit shiny. Ugh. Fifty-seven hundred dollars for a card. Fifty-seven thousand. Yeah, fifty-seven thousand for a card. Oh yeah. Well, some people just have reasons to buy this shit. I guess. I guess. Well, on that note, I think that'll be the end of the soft material. So. Oh boy, it's time to take a uh, quick break and we'll be right back with the hardcore material, folks. And if you thought that a $57,000 card was the height of lunacy tonight, 
you got another thing coming. I will uh, give a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. We are going to have a sequel tonight. A sequel for it. what? Well, sequel! A sequel for what? Well, you'll find out after this com- uh, music interlude. I almost said commercial break, but we don't do those yet. Please, please somebody sponsor us. We'll be right back with Trademark Strain Wreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. Except when it's spending so much money on one piece of paper. Welcome back, passengers, to Trademark's Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. It's time to start the hardcore material, and once again, we are starting off in Florida. Because there's apparently nowhere else in the wor- and nowhere else in this country, or the world for that matter, where stupid shit happens. Apparently, apparently. not. Apparently! Yeah, this is pretty much the Florida Man episode, everybody, minus the one with uh, the Georgian. One Georgian. Yeah. Oh, man. It's Southern Fried Stupid, everybody. Yep. It's... There's our title for tonight. Anyway, it's Florida, it's drunk, and it's feisty. Oh, Lord. It's, you're, I'm ticking off squares on the bingo card. A woman tries to stop sister from driving drunk, gets bitten. Sounds about right. Yeah. Although, that sounds like... <laughs> I've heard that happen over here in my side of the country. It's not exclusive to Florida. No. I think what makes this article, though, is the fucking mugshot. Look at the smug-ass mugshot of this girl. She's just like, yeah, I did it. I'll fucking do it again. I did it. I'll do it again. Yeah, exactly. October 21st, 2021, from The Villages. A woman who was too drunk to drive bit her sister during a fight outside a bar in The Villages. <laughs> Melody Jean Smalley, or Melody Jean Smalley, I don't fucking care, 24 years old, had been drinking with friends Saturday night at the World of Beer. Oh! What the fuck is that? 2751 West Torch Lake Drive at Brownwood Paddock Square. Uh, She called her two sisters to come get her. When her sisters arrived, Smalley insisted on driving herself home. One of Smalley's sisters tried to stop her by getting into the driver's seat of Smalley's car. Smalley pulled her sister out of the driver's seat by her hair, dragging her to the ground. As they fought each other, the remaining sister tried to break them up. After the fight, the sister who attacked, who was attacked left in her own car. The remaining sister, sister corralled Smalley, getting her into the backseat of her car. In the car, Smalley continued to argue and fight, and that's when the biting happened. During the argument, Smalley's sister reached back at Smalley before she sunk her teeth into her sister's thumb, piercing her skin and refusing to let go. The sister managed to pull Smalley out of her vehicle, locking herself inside as Smalley continued to punch and kick the car. When the victim drove off, she called the sister who left, who then called 911. Police responded to the scene at around 11.30 p.m., taking Smalley to Sumter County Jail, where she later posted a $1,000 bond. She faces faces charges of battery and domestic violence. Oh, good God. Well? To answer your question, Trade, um, the world of beer is a bar, is a craft beer um, uh, tavern and, and... Kitchen. Uh huh. They're think like Buffalo Wild Wings, kind of, except instead of Buffalo Wings, their specialty is beer. Okay, then. This is one of those cases where it seems that things exploded for no goddamn reason. Like, I get it. When you're drunk, you think you're perfectly fine. Oh, I'm fine. I can handle myself. But like, and when you're drunk, and when you're drunk, things just piss you off a lot more than usual. I've been there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, not appropriate, Dad. Don't bite your sister. Not appropriate. I have oh, no. been I have been tipsy before, but that is as far as I will go in terms of getting drunk because I don't know what the fuck will happen with me. I could end up like this girl like, and start biting. Like like we've seen you properly fully drunk. 
you you fucking right. Like, nope. two, because he had hated Frozen so much. And when he was in the middle of Frozen 2, he started commenting drunkenly how good of a movie it was. Yeah. It was actually rather amusing. Kind of cute. Yeah, I, I essentially... It was at the start of the pandemic, and I had gathered the stuff for rum and cokes because I was just like, fuck it, if I'm going to stay home, I might as well have booze. And then, you know, I had watched Frozen 1, and I did not like it. I, I did not understand what the hype was. So uh, our good friend from Australia, Stormspark, was like, you're going to watch Frozen 2. And I'm just like, the fuck I'm not, at least not sober. And uh, I... Yeah, I realized that I'm not good at mixing drinks. I didn't put in he a shot glass. He also realized he was quite wrong. Yeah, I didn't I didn't put it in a shot glass. I didn't do the fingers thing. I just went glug glug. That looks about right. Soda. Yep, that's how uh that's how a friend of mine ended up uh in a camping trip ended up face down in my tent that I loaned him and puking his guts out. Yeah, like thank God I was just doing rum and cokes cuz like I don't know my limits. And I frankly don't want to test my limits. I don't want, like, the 151 proof vodka or whatever the fuck. Like, I don't want... 151 rum. 151 rum. Thank you. I just... I, I don't want to test him. Because, again, I don't know what I'll become. Like, from what we've seen, maybe I'll be the giggly... The giggly drunk who's just tired and is just a little shithead. You know, kind of like normal trademark. <laughs> no. I Like, we don't want to see you become the... the 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 fucking I'm a bite your ass trademark kind of drunk. I don't yeah, think he'd no. do that. I I don't think unless so. somebody really pissed him off. Oh, if somebody pissed me off while I was drunk, I guarantee you that if I got pissed off while I was drunk, I would have no sense sense of self control. It would just be like fucking hate uh, windmill windmill punches. Because <laughs> I'm not a fighter. What are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, my uh, one of the times I got drunk is when I uh. I, I do tend to run my mouth sometimes, but I never start a fight um, when I get drunk. However, one night I ran my mouth, so I tried to start a fight with me, and I was fully prepared to finish it. Oh, <laughs> I was ready to go. But his buddy got in between the both of us. He's like, nope. I'm like, all right, then. I'm yeah. out. Uh, I just I just, I just, just hope I'm the giggly drunk who just curls up on the couch and just laughs to himself. I want to be that. I don't want to be an angry drunk. No. Not not like this fucking <laughs> this fucking bitch with her like goofy ass fucking mug shot. She just seems like she honestly reminds me of a sorority girl. Yeah. A drunk sorority girl. Yeah. My god, I bet her. Well, so when can I go home? <laughs> I'll fucking do it again. Right, moving on and upping the ante just a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. It's another Florida story, and this one... Hmm. Fuck's sake, Florida. Florida really, uh, overperformed the last two weeks. So, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, there is a time and a place to get your jollies. The back of an ambulance is not one of them. Oh, Lord. Florida man summons ambulance for self-pleasure session. That's... Does he have a medical fetish or something? I don't know. Let's find out. This happened October 19th, 2021. May God have mercy on our souls. <clears throat> a Florida man who called for an ambulance last week, or the week prior to October 19th, due to breathing difficulties, astounded paramedics when he proceeded to strip off and pleasure himself inside the emergency vehicle. Terry Majors oh. summoned first responders in St. Petersburg on Thursday afternoon by dialing 911 to complain that he was suffering from shortness of breath. But once inside the ambulance, the 30-year-old allegedly took off his clothes and started to masturbate. Ugh. He pulled his... Mm. At least he was using protection. Because, yeah, apparently he was pre-gaming and... had his members sheathed and was masturbating in the back of the ambulance. Well, I was about to say, what, did he grab one of the, uh, did he grab a, uh, a latex glove from the back? No, he had a condom. I don't know, he just had a condom on. Like, he was pre-gaming, 
and he had it on, and he just began masturbating while looking at the EMTs who were trying to treat him. He also asked for an ice pack, which he then folded and used it, well, as an own a hole, let's just say. Oh, God. Majors was yeah, this this has this has to be like a medical fetish or something. I guess, but I don't know. There's a little bit more to this. Let's take a look. <clears throat> he was arrested and booked into the Pinellas County Jail on a charge of indecent exposure, a misdemeanor. He was released that Friday morning on his own recognizance. His remarkable recovery powers aside, Majors is making an unhealthy habit of uh, out of brushes with the law. Online records show he had only recently finished serving a one-year jail sentence on felony drug charges to go with a prison, prior prison term for burglary. <sighs> just... Why? I don't know. Um... What? 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 <sighs> I'm sure if Greymane were here, he would, like, <laughs> have some words about this guy, but, like, what? I cannot... I'm trying to wrap my mind around this guy's, like, thought process. Like, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, horniness is not a crime. We all have our kinks. We're not here to shame them. That's that's not our place to say. We get that certain people have certain fetishes and interests and all that stuff. But, like, keep that to yourself or your partner. Should they be willing? If they're unwilling, keep it to yourself. And that goes for everyone beyond your house. Everyone beyond your personal little bubble. Because I I can't... I still can't wrap my mind around the thought process. This guy was pre-gaming. Hence the condom. This, and then he asked for well, Maybe he was pack. excited for the... He, he was getting into the, you know... Uh, what, what, what we call it? Maybe he was just getting into the anticipation of anticipation of them showing up. What 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 fetish is that? The fetish of first responders? Like, no, med just medical fetish. I got nothing. I got no words. Honestly, Fanny, do you have anything? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially speechless at just this bizarre fucking thing. Maybe it's a medical fetish. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that just once again, this is a case of keep it in your pants and keep it to yourself. This guy called an ambulance to jerk off in the back. I don't know how much I have to emphasize that, but it's just like also a <laughs> Also, just the fact that he also had a felony drug charge and also a burglary charge. Maybe this is one of those cases where this is a guy who just wants to go to jail. I don't know. <sighs> anyway. I think we've waited long enough. It's time for the sequel. There we go. It's time for the end and it's time for the sequel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this one is going to get a little bit rough, but at the same time, there's just something about this particular article that I could not pass. Now, previously, I had featured this gentleman on the softcore material. He has graduated since then and has moved over to the hardcore material. And once I get reading for this article, you will understand why. Now, if you are averse to stories of abuse... I highly recommend that you turn away now. I don't normally report on this, but if I can report on someone throwing the letter G at somebody, then I can talk about this. Alrighty, so... More trouble for Florida Man Poster Boy. Yep. A.K.A. The man with Florida tattooed on his forehead. <laughs> yep, it's this guy again. It looks like just a hideous birthmark. It really does. Okay. So this happened November 3rd. The Florida man who was who has a silhouette of the Sunshine State tattooed on his forehead is facing a felony charge for allegedly throttling his mother. 
inside the travel trailer where he resides. Let that fester a moment. This man went after his mother. Investigators allege that Matthew Letham, 23, wrapped his arm around his mother's neck, quote, constricting her airflow to the point she faded out. Letham, who is free on $10,000 bond, is scheduled for a November 17th pre-trial hearing in connection with a criminal information charging him with domestic battery by strangulation, a felony carrying a maximum five years prison sentence. Oh, there we go. Yep. As detailed in a complaint affidavit, the 39-year-old victim... Good God. Yeah. This woman had this guy at 16 years old. She was woefully unprepared for this. Yeah, that's a good assessment. <clears throat> anyway, she was recently attacked inside Letham's residence at the Lakewood Travel Park in Hudson, a city about 45 miles north of Tampa. The woman told police she had gone to her son's home to pick him up and drive him to work. Keep that in mind. Upon arriving at the trailer around 2.40 p.m., the victim said her son was, quote, intoxicated and lying down on his bed. Here comes the creepy part. Ugh. When she woke him up, Letham stated, I can't do this anymore. I'm just gonna kill you. Letham allegedly then threw a large television at his mother who, quote, attempted to flee from the small quarters of the travel trailer. Letham, the affidavit states, quote, grabbed his mother around the neck in a headlock and began to choke her. The victim told police, quote, She felt like this was it, and she faded out. Well, that is... Okay, so we've got... Threatening, intimidating, assault. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe not assault with a deadly weapon, but definitely aggravated assault. Domestic battery um, by strangulation. Domestic battery by strangulation and um, is it kidnapping or abdu abduction? Kidnapping. Abduction means you have to uh, move between state and border lines. And kidnapping because he refused to allow her to leave the, build leave the area. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this guy's getting 20 years. Let's take a look. Especially if he, especially if he was on fel felony probation at the time. Thankfully, the woman added that, uh, thankfully, the woman uh, made it to the trailer's doorway and kicked the door open and called for neighbors to dial 911. Police who interviewed the woman spotted noticeable redness to her neck and throat area and several scratches around her neck and face. When cops arrived at the scene, Letham initially barricaded himself inside the trailer. After exiting the residence, he claimed his mother had, quote, started the altercation by putting her hands on him when, huh. when she woke him up. Dude. Yeah, least. that's kind of how you have to, like, wake somebody up, unless you, like, just, like, scream at them. Yeah, it's better than going right in, right up in their ear and saying, Wake the fuck up! <laughs> somebody like this guy, I would just use an air horn. Just be like, Hi. I would not only use an air horn, but I would use an air horn and a megaphone, <laughs> because I'm that kind of evil. You're air that horn kind and of a dick. super soaker. Yeah. Filled with ice water. You're not evil, you're just that kind of a dick. Yeah. The thoughts that go into my head when I am pissed off. Let them, cops added. Also said that he would fight law enforcement officers and referred to himself as a serial killer. Oh my god. Dude, you're not making things better for yourself. They're not going to go away because you claim you're a serial killer. They kind of take offense to that, dude. Let them, who works as a cook, first appeared in these pages in February following his arrest for misuse of 911 and marijuana possession, charges, charges for which he later pleaded no contest and was ordered to pay $500 in fines and court costs. Okay, so he wasn't on felony probation. No. So as you can see, upgrade. Big time. <sighs> like, I get it. I'm in my 20s. I'm nearing my late 20s, and that's all I'll say on my own age. And I get it. You're going through a rough period in your life, especially... Especially given the, the the state of things as a whole. Especially given the state of things in Florida. Yeah. I, I get it. Things are fucking stressful for young adults right now. I should know. 
But like, as someone who, now I don't have an official diagnosis on my hands, but I feel like anxiety is probably a big one for me, and also stress, just stress in general. As someone who possibly suffers from that sort of medical shit, that sort of mental shit, there are better ways to alleviate yourself of just stress in general. Drinking yourself into a fucking coma the day before you go to work, that's just the tip of the iceberg of things not to do. Why would you drink on a work night? I'm hungover from this morning, jackass. Yes. Yeah, why? Just... Again, another reason why I don't drink to excess. Maybe one bottle of cider and that's it. But like... Again, I get it. Shit's stressful. But the more you overindulge yourself in harmful ways of relieving your stress, the more you're gonna fuck things over for yourself. And congratulations, you've reached the epitome uh, well, you haven't killed anybody yet, so you're you're nearly at the epitome of fucking things over for yourself. They could actually charge him with attempted murder, because he straight up said, I'll just kill you, and then he started to do something that would have possibly killed his mother. Not to mention he referred to himself as a serial killer. So, yeah. Not a smart thing to do! No, not in general. <laughs> I'm just fucking... <sighs> Folks, we're not sponsored by BetterHelp. But if you're having these sort of issues, where you're finding yourself, not exactly in these sort of circumstances, but in like very stressful circumstances where you're saying to yourself, I can't take this anymore, find some help, please. There's no shame in finding help for yourself. Like, good God. Like, if you don't find help for yourself, you end up like this guy. Or pretty much any of the guys that we've ever talked about on the train wreck. Evaluate yourself, then have a medical professional evaluate your mental state, and then find the right way that's best for you to alleviate yourself of your stress, your depression, your anxiety, your paranoia, you know, whatever ails you. Like, <sighs> just, that that's all I can say about the Florida man. Because holy shit. He went from simple 911 system abuse and marijuana possession to where we are now. I feel like we just went on a fucking journey. And it's not it's not a not one with a happy ending. We go on journeys every week. We go oh, on boy. journeys and sometimes they end nice. Sometimes sometimes we get funny stuff like the avatar from last week. With the booze and, then, and the um, fire and the sprinkler system and the sword. And, and then, then sometimes we get this. Sometimes we get this. I try to avoid articles where people nearly died or people get abused and people get fucking attacked. But like, I felt... I kind of need to talk about that one. We do. We kind of do. Especially with people like this. This guy is the perfect illustration of why... People need help. Because again, we went from 911 system abuse to strangling your mother. We, we have escalated. You need help. You need help, sir. America needs help. We do. We really do. We're so, we're so fucked up. And we really shouldn't celebrate that. We really shouldn't. No. Like... Just a quick, real moment. I personally, I've said this, I think I've mentioned it before, but I'm going to say it again. I personally went through a time where, like, I grew up in the Bible Belt. I grew up in, a, in, a, in an environment where if you admitted that you had mental illness or needed mental assistance, you were kind of, you were ostracized. You were treated like you weren't like a functioning human being, and you kept quiet about it. You didn't talk about it. You didn't say, hey, I had a set great session with my therapist. You were just like, oh, I had a good week last week. Why? Oh, you know, I talked about some stuff with somebody. Or you just didn't mention it at all, and you just pretended you never saw a therapist. But I needed help. My world was getting to a point where I was so stressed out all the time, so on edge, so freaked out about every little thing. 
that it was causing disruptions at work. I was not performing and I did was close to potentially losing my job because of my outbursts. So I did something. I, I went and got help. I went to my, lo- I looked up what my, lo- some of my local therapy and counseling centers here in my town and I scheduled an appointment and the counselor I happened to get was wonderful and said that one, if I needed to cry in a session, I was more than welcome to cry because that's usually my outlet when I'm overwhelmed with emotion is crying. Yes, and I crying. was told by my therapist, I could cry. Crying I was also told mad. that I could get mad and yell. I couldn't do it in the building. They'd take me outside to the little pond that's down the way from the building where I could scream and yell and get angry. But I could at least fuck still get angry. Like, <laughs> fuck you, ducks! Fuck you, ducks. Like, I could get mad. Like, I was told I could have cathartic moments. I could be open with anything. And they would give me tools and advice to help me out. And I needed that so much. So much. My very first session, I came back to work. And everyone at work real saw how much better I was all with just one session. I'm three sessions in. I have not cried. I have not stressed out. I have not freaked out in the least bit. In the last month and a half. And I know that's not always going to be the case. I know there will be times when I might, you know, lapse back into a freak out session. But I'm at least, I've at least got a, someone who can help me out with that. And a, they're a trained medical professional. Yep. And we, we stigmatize mental, mental illness and mental health when we shouldn't i mean if you're sick if you're if you if you're if something if your kidneys hurt if your leg hurts if you just have a slight headache and a and a chill you go see a doctor if there's something wrong with the rest of your body you see a doctor and it's treated as a normal thing why can't seeing a doctor for your mental health be normal too because if we made mental health normal we wouldn't have du- guys like this guy yeah. He would be able to talk about his mommy issues yeah. well, in a be, safe and welcome fair, environment. I could go on an entire rant about how, well, yes, it is good if you, that we have these, that these things are available if you can get it. But I'm not going to get into that because this is the wrong place for it. Mm. Yeah. If you, but yeah, my point is, if you can afford it, if you can get it, if there is a way for you to be able to get help, get help. Don't be like these people. Where you or your repressions, your wants and desires, and where your anger and your issues are allowed to build up until you snap. Yeah, and and if you can't afford it, talk with your friends, talk with your family. Yeah, they're not medical professionals, and they're not gonna uh, have the same medical advice as a professional would have. But you would be amazed what talking through your issues with your family and your friends can do. Even if they're, even if they have no relation to what's stressing you out, it's just general stress. Just talking about what generally stresses you, and being able to let it, it out. Yeah, it can do a world of uh, difference. Because here's the thing: emotions are normal. What's not normal is letting them out at the wrong time, like this guy did. Like this guy did. Like the guy who threw the letter G at his girlfriend. Like the guy who wanted to be a policeman. Yeah. So, uh, getting off of our soapbox and getting back to the point of this show, that is going to be it. (laughs) Yeah, point, right? Our very, very weird fucking point. I I think that's going to be it for this episode of Trainwreck. Very much so. I can't even... Yeah, this was a little bit of a weird, little bit of a rough one this week. But thank you for bearing with us if you're still listening. Oh, man, just oh, stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. All the stupid. Right. Thank you for listening to Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio. I'll fan them all the time. With me here tonight has been Sherlock. Hey. And the fangirl. I need a nap. 
We all do. <laughs> Once again, thank you for listening. Our banner art was created by Court Awesome, and our theme song was created by Merivex. You can find their social media, our social media, and the links to all the articles we discussed in the description below in the YouTube version, where I beg of you to subscribe and like and comment. Please. Please. In the meantime, my name's Trademark, and good night. Night.